Yo. What's up, yeah. everybody? It's episode 52 of the podcast. I'm hazy. We got Clutch and Paul. What's up, peeps? Chillin', chillin'. Yep, yo, sick yo, as fuck. What up, everybody? You sound so excited, Bo. Wow, look at the, Bro, listen I'm... to the fucking excitement and the energy in your voice. <laughs> you can hear, you can, you can hear how nasally I am. I don't want to hear it. I've nasally. had a sinus infection for a week. I'm pretty sure that's what's here right now. The headache is killing me. That's, that's what is the problem. I might have a headache every time. Those be the worst. Are you over yours, Hazy, now? It's it's still there. My ear is like getting. I can hear better and better every day. Like better. Yeah. And, it's like a it's like a like a level of sound comes out. It's like <laughs> like every morning. <laughs> What's up, guys? Vexy, Rowan, Ohio, Mom, who has spoken. Diamond D, thank you for the raid, man. Mom who has spoken, Bascular Tech, hey, it's Yanni Drywall, Kyle. Guys, appreciate you being here. Episode 52. Episode oh. 52 of the podcast. I wanted to just kind of, I wanted to, I've been, I've been doing a lot of, uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, documentary, like, searching, trying to find, like, some of this new stuff that's been going on. Netflix has crazy documentaries, and, and they're all relatively, um, new stories you know what i mean all, all relatively new stories i don't know if you heard of the don't fuck with cats documentary did you hear that that documentary on netflix i feel like i heard it but i never watched it listen i don't want to even say nothing about it because this fucking this fucking documentary is about some seriously twisted shit um uh, is it about cats yeah, I mean, there's there's literally that's what triggered the investigation. So <clears throat> I can give you a little backstory on this, but then I want to I wanted to talk and see if you saw something else that was going on. I haven't actually watched Mine Hunter, to be honest. That was from a couple years ago. No, yeah, yeah, no, this is from a couple years ago. My, I'm not. I don't want to talk about this one particularly. I would like to. Um, I would like to talk more about uh, the Alex Murdoch. Uh, shit, because that's new, and that is crazy to think that that shit's possible in this day and age. I guess it's not, because it got it got clipped. But to start out with, the Don't Fuck With Cats documentary is about a... So, so basically, there was this guy on the internet that showed a snake eating a kitten. Right? Like, that's that was the video. A snake eating a kitten. And these... These um, these housewives, essentially, is really what it was. Like, these homemaker, stay-at-home moms saw this, and, like, this group of moms started to do an investigation to find out who this person was. And it ends up being that this person killed an actual human being. And uh, it's just, it ends up being this crazy shit. And the guy makes, like, a murder video... It's just fucking wacky, man. But the thing is, is it's on fucking Netflix. Like, this shit is right there on Netflix. And it's just, it's wild to think that people people, people don't believe that you can be caught by posting something. So when you post something on the internet or when you take a picture, on your phone, your phone puts a geo track on it, right? Wherever you take that picture, wherever you take that video, there is a... Essentially an IP address. Yo, Carnage is going hard with the giveaways. Look at this shit. There's essentially uh, uh, an IP address attached to that picture. So you can find out where a picture was taken. So so the picture and the videos that this person was taking, she was finding like a general area of where this was. And then like cross-referencing his Facebook pictures. and It was just a wild fucking thing. It's called Don't Fuck With Cats. And ended up being a, a traumatically, like a traumatic fucking thing like that happened. Um, he ends up killing some some exchange student in his uh, in his apartment, and then like wheels him out Jeffrey Dahmer style in a suitcase. Like it's like really sick shit. Damn. That sounds crazy. crazy. 
It is absolutely weird ass fucking people out there, dude. Like really weird people out there. Dude, it's wild. It's not it's not um it's not an easy watch to say the least. Right? It's not an easy watch. It's quite difficult, actually. Um But let me get into this one. The Alex Murdaugh stuff. Okay, this is this is on Netflix. This is brand spanking new. His trial just happened. I don't know if other people's YouTube recommends court cases, but mine does because of how much of that shit I look up. So I didn't actually hear about this guy until his trial was going on. Uh, I start looking up this guy a little bit, and to come to find out, he's like a fourth-generation lawyer in this small town in, uh, I think, North Carolina, maybe? Georgia? I don't know. Some, some place down south. And his great-grandfather started the legal system for that town something like 100 years ago. Right, um, and then his grandfather took over. Then his father took over as lead prosecutor of the of the whole county, and then he took over for a little while. Apparently, he got hooked on drugs and was like skimming money off of people. Like I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to tell too much because it's such an interesting story. Right, like this very prominent lawyer, Alex Murdaugh, has two sons, a wife, super successful, huge hunting property, right? But apparently, he is st- stealing millions of dollars from his clients, and he is essentially the most powerful person in that town. He is friends with all of the lawyers, friends with all the cops, everybody knows everybody. You ever been? You ever experienced a town like that before? Yeah, small ass city. Basically, where I live, to be honest. Yeah, I was gonna say there's a lot of places in Jersey that are like that because they're they're too like cause the town next to me is like two square miles big, right? Everybody knows everybody. Mm-hmm. And this is McDonald's cup, and it's not McDonald's though; it's just a cup. I refill it with the uh, lemonade. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> so these people uh, essentially are. Um, like a very prominent family. So think about like a prominent family and they've got like a black sheep son that gets in trouble, right? And all the cops know he's a knucklehead, right? All the cops know he's a knucklehead, but they don't do nothing about it, right? Like they just let him be a knucklehead. Well, this dude's fucking son ends up killing a girl in a boat accident, right? So he ends up killing a girl in a drunk driving boat accident. And these these kids were so well off and so spoiled and so in tune with um with all of the law enforcement and stuff in that town that they knew they couldn't drink and drive but they could drink and boat. Right? Like there wouldn't be any stops on the water, right? So they could just drive to the bar on the boat. Oh. I think I know this is all right, keep going. I think I know this. Actually, I think I remember hearing about this. Right, so they killed somebody, right? He, well, he they killed their friend, right? This is his best friend's girlfriend, Mallory, ends up getting. They hit a they hit a uh, a bridge. They hit some kind of underpass. They hit the, you know, the structure of the bridge, and she went flying, and they didn't find her for like five days or something. By when they found her, she was dead. Apparently, the kid was wasted drunk. Right? Wasted drunk. There's video footage of him being all weird and like fucking Hunter S. Thompson esque because he's all fucked up and, 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 uh, anyway, apparently he fucking, he was completely wasted. They didn't do any blood tests or maybe they did. I, either, either way, he was never even handcuffed, this guy. When he goes to the uh, hospital, apparently they're saying, You killed my girlfriend. Like, as the cops get there, and he's laughing, like, this kid is laughing, like, he's so out of his mind, he doesn't even realize what he's doing, right? So, he fucking bounces out of there, goes to the hospital, his father and his grandfather come. Kazuto, thank you for the bits, bro. His father and his grandfather come there, they're flashing their badges, They, they take the kid home. This girl's missing, he was in a drunk driving accident on water. 
He never gets handcuffed, never nothing. Right? So, apparently that's when the real controversy starts in this family. He was already addicted to drugs, the lawyer father. Right? He was on oxys. Apparently, he was taking whole scripts in one day. Homie was so addicted to Percocets. Um... He was taking 30, 40 pills in a day, which is totally possible because I myself am an ex-junkie. And it was easy enough to go through 40, 50 Percocets if you had the money to do it. And he apparently had the money. So his drug dealer was getting rich, paying... Because uh, this guy was obviously paying a buck a milligram all the way up fucking for every single, every single pill he took. Because that's what they cost, a dollar a milligram. I, I don't know what they cost now. That This was 10 years ago. They cost a dollar a milligram. It's got to be more now. That's why fentanyl is a thing. I think so, way more now. Wow, that's crazy. 40, 50 oh, a day. Bro. Yo, Kazuto, thank you for the two gifted, man. I appreciate you. Professor X, appreciate you. P. Fraser, thank you. Kyle, this is <laughs> the Alex Murdoch case, right? So his son kills a girl he's addicted to drugs he's stealing money this is the summary so far right his son kills a girl he's like this entitled rich kid that is connected in this small town then here's the other thing right his his other son right is apparently linked to this this young man who is a uh, homosexual Right? He's a homosexual uh, male. And there's rumors that him and the older son are kind of messing around. Apparently, he called that kid to... Uh, he called the, the lawyer's son for help because he ran out of gas or something. And then a few hours later, the kid was obviously hit by a car and killed and dead on the side of the road. So there's all these... So, <laughs> so that was linked... Wow. To, to the one son, the other son killed the girl, right? Then there was a life insurance policy that they took out on their maid, right? Like the housekeeper, right? They took out this life insurance thing for their sons, uh, for, for her sons, apparently. She slips and falls down the stairs because the pack of hunting dogs ran up the stairs and tripped her. She fell down the stairs kill and was killed. All of this happened in five years, all these dead people. Insurance money, all kinds of shit. Homie was getting high off of fucking, on the most elite of uh, proportions, off fucking. So, so, so the money for the for the family that he took out the insurance policy. Clearly, there's foul play in some um, in some way, and he took the insurance money. So uh, apparently, the fucking walls were closing in on this guy, right? Money was missing, his drug abuse was crazy, the two people, I mean, the three people that are dead, right, the fucking, the two people linked to the kids, the one lady linked to him, and then, all of a sudden, the wife and the son that killed the girl end up getting shot by two different guns on their property. Shot dead. Wow. Wow. This is, listen to me, this is, the, you, if you, if I told you this was a movie, you'd be like, this shit's fucking out of control. You'd be like, there's so much fucking stuff happening here. Exactly. But I'm not kidding you, there is literally nothing but power, like, like these guys had power, they had fucking millions of dollars, they had a thousand acres on a property called Moselle. Right? A thousand acre hunting property and vacation house they lived on. Um, they had another house. They, they were just so, they had so much money. They had vacations, beautiful girlfriends, right? Like, it was insane. There's a documentary on Netflix about it. The trial just happened. The father, Alex Murdaugh, was convicted of killing his wife and child. He shot them. They literally did a, um, they did like a 3D print, like a three, not a 3D print, but like a 3D model of what they thought it looked like, the crime scene. And the way that he reacted, his story, he got on trial. He sat there and gave a, dep uh, you know, talked 
being cross-examined for for hours dude it is it is just the most bizarre thing i've ever seen it's over now and i think they're adding episodes to the documentary but i mean it's it's fucking crazy bro it's crazy this guy literally was a lawyer for however many long uh, years as a prosecutor in his in his town and he had his own private business that he was stealing from his partners never caught him until way later so he would he would do a settlement right somebody would get a settlement for two million dollars him and his law firm would get eight hundred thousand dollars and his client would get 1.1 million right that was standard apparently that was standard then he would still steal out of their 1.1 million he'd take another two three hundred thousand dollars At one point, it's like, I don't know. Alex, Murdoff, like, I don't know. Alex Murdoff? His name was yeah. Alexander Murdoff. He killed his, he's been convicted of killing his wife and son. Um, and I guess, I don't know if he's been, he's been convicted of embezzling any kind of money or anything. But apparently, he did this, this brutal murder of his family to throw the scent off the money and collect more money and... Like, the, like, you have to see this whole thing. It, it is so bizarre, man. They, they got the body camera footage on YouTube of when he shows up, uh, when the cops show up to the scene, and he shows up, and he's like, are they dead? I went to go touch. Like, it's just, cr it's crazy, bro. Sounds crazy. Give me I, don't, I don't know if anybody else is interested in shit like that, but I'm totally interested in shit like that. I find it enthralling sometimes people mindset in that type of situation you know they they go through crazy stuff when they do that yeah what what did it call on netflix though is it called the alex word off here is it i mean let me check real quick uh, i think it's called that because i want to check it out <laughs> this stuff interests me so i have to sit down and watch it <laughs> yeah um, Avatar is on Disney too, uh, Plus. All right. I would say, I have, like, I have a hard time, like, sitting down to watch something, but if I can, if I sit down and start it, I usually get sucked in. It's called it's the, Mur like, um, uh, the Murdaugh Murders, a Southern Scandal. There is literally a different documentary on this on every single app. Hulu's got one, HBO's got one, Cinemax's got one, they all got different ones. But this one's got three three hours worth of worth of shit. It's crazy, man. I want to see it now. Listen, it's it's one of the craziest things I've ever fucking heard. So, so this is the kind of shit that they got on Netflix. I'm having a hard time. Um, Dahmer was on Netflix, right? What's that? Dahmer, Jeffrey Dahmer. Was yeah, on Dahmer's on Netflix too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've got they're starting to get into some heavy shit. Yeah, well, I mean, people love that shit. Hold on, people love that shit. Though. They have, yeah, they have the actual, they have the John Wayne Gacy tapes, they have the Ted Bundy tapes, and the D Jeffrey Dahmer tapes, which is all the the legitimate files of, um, you know, the interviews with the lawyers and. And all that shit, all the stuff. He, he, I mean, not to get into the Jeffrey Dahmer shit, but that shit, I couldn't wait to see, to hear that. I've been, in, I've been fascinated with Dahmer and Bundy and Gacy for, for years, you know? <laughs> the Mitten Kid, welcome in. Thanks for being here. <clears throat> the Lemonhead Gaming, sup? Have anybody That's seen the, um, the Murdaugh murders? I'm sorry, Cliff. No, I was gonna just say that the Dahmer was a good show. I, I enjoyed watching it too. That that guy uh, was it Evan Peters? I think he played that real great. I didn't watch the show in full. Like I watched it in pieces. I seen so many fucking movies on Dahmer. Mm -hmm. I seen so many interviews on him that I pretty much knew the story. And I gotta be honest with you, it kind of made me uncomfortable watching it. Like it wasn't something that. It wasn't something that I felt like I needed to see again. I had seen it so many times. I wanted to see the actual tapes of his interviews more than anything. 
Um, they came out with a documentary after the Dahmer one too, right? That's what I'm like saying. Actual, I wanted to see the real one. I wanted to see the conversations with the killer, the Jeffrey Dahmer tapes. You know, that's the one that I wanted to see because the, the actual interviews, right? With Dahmer himself. Yeah. Right, the actual stuff. Luck dogs, Demi Bob, Big C Deer Hunter. What's up, guys? It makes sense because it's like you can you can picture the whole story if you know the information, right? But like, it's like I want to know what what he was thinking. Right. Well, the <laughs> you thing- want to hear him tell me why like what was going through his mind that made him want to do something like that so, so the thing was is that like like i was saying he has been um he has been broadcast in his insanity on the screen for years like even jeremy renner played jeffrey dahmer right like they're just very small movies that weren't massive blockbusters but there's several dahmer movies there's several Ted Bundy movies. I mean, there's several fucking, several movies on on all of those people. One the one, Zach, Zach Afron's on. Which one he's, I think he did Ted Bundy. Didn't he, he did Ted Bundy. He did the movie yeah. though. So that's the yeah. thing. They haven't done. They didn't remake a Gacy movie, right? They didn't remake Gacy on Netflix, but they have a Gacy real conversations with the killer. They have that. They have that show. Um, Dahmer they remade it into a series. Ted Bundy they made a movie, but they all have the interviews with the killer, right? Um, what are you looking up, Bo? I was looking up the uh, Buzzsprout the link. Actually, oh. yeah, that Don't link. We gotta we gotta keep on um, loading up. Uh, old episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah don't mind me. I, just, I seen it and I was like, oh, let me check this out real quick. What's Sorry, that? that's my ADD. It's fucking with me sometimes. I liked how, uh, yeah, the Dahmer at the end of the series, they, uh, they introduce, I think, right, Ed Gacy, you said, right? That's the name? John Wayne and, Gacy? Right, John Wayne Gacy, where it was like in the, the jail and the baptism happened at the same time in the execution. I'm hoping with that they will make a show on the other guy because that other guy looked crazy, you know. No, they're all fucking nuts. They end the like ending where like the room with all the 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 skulls and like the bedposts and whatnot. It it, it looked pretty crazy. So when when I saw when I initially saw the the the, the Dahmer. So we're talking about documentaries and all the crazy documentaries that they have on um, on Netflix right now. They have the Don't Fuck With Cats, right? That's the one about this guy named Luca who ends up being a killer. Uh, he killed somebody and, like, dismembered them and made a video and posted it on the Internet. That That is a crazy fucking concept to me, right? Like, that is a crazy concept that this person did this. The sheer brutality in that 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 somebody, and then they can make a fucking documentary about it on Netflix. So, like, this is the shit that my nephew can end up seeing, right? Like, my ne- my nephew can end up seeing this shit. I'm having a good night, Kazudo. Seven eight five Cambo, appreciate the first time chat, man. Welcome, thank you for the follow. We're doing good. We're doing a podcast tonight. This is the 52nd episode of the Streamers Paradise Podcast. Anybody who's new, welcome in. I'm Hazy. We got Bo and Clutch here with us tonight. Best uh, documentary ever. What, Don't Fuck With Cats? Is that what you're talking about, Base Gator? Because Don't Fuck With with Cats, actually, it genuinely kind of creeps me out, that that video. I would suggest watching it because it's crazy, but it... You gotta have a strong stomach for it because it's not an easy watch. It's not an easy watch at all. They show quite a bit. That title gets me. It makes me want to watch it. This is where the, the title's <laughs> not very. <laughs> no fuck with cat. It's got very misleading. Cat. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Your son watched my Squid my Games life. before he knew what it was? Oh my god. He's 10. Oh. <laughs> my son wanted to watch it. He wants to watch it. I'm like, nah, I can't. Nah, Lucas, you can't. Go watch a YouTube version, a different version of it. (laughs) I never even seen Squid Games. (sighs) Don't fuck with 
Don't Fuck With Cats is about a doc is a documentary about a group of I want to say a group of like housewife type of of women like like they were they were people who stayed at home and and kind of kept the house and they had they had some extra time to do this investigative work together like i forget it was a group of women that that like had some kind of club together like i'm not even i'm not even kidding they were on a facebook group like it was a group of moms on a facebook group that saw this they were probably some kind of kitten group and the, and then and this fuck i don't remember exactly but then this guy uh kills a kitten with a snake essentially feeds a snake to the kitten kitten to the snake and then that they lose sounds like a bunch of cat moms they lose their fucking mind and they they start this investigation but how fire is that though kazuto 11 months man thank you i find it crazy so, so basically this is a fucking just like a sick ass dude who killed some somebody and did some weird shit posted it on really the internet shit. yeah did some really weird shit with like like let a snake eat a cat posted it on the internet pissed off a bunch of karens and then he and had fucking, fun fucking like, with them <laughs> after <laughs> and then and then they like got him found out that he killed somebody and put his ass in jail. It's fucking He wanted to be a male model. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was some shit fucking like that. Wild ass shit. The guy's name was like Luca Donna or something. Luca something. He's fucking nuts, bro. Nuts. Yo, Cod Lady, thank you for the sub. Appreciate you. I think I you. remember that now. I think I seen that somewhere. The guy wanted to be a male model, right? He was very like Yeah, and apparently he, in that way, right? Yeah, and then he 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 would make um he made a bunch of fake accounts and shit but that's just that's just one of yo city lights coming in with a raid of 11 let's fucking go city lights welcome in guys city what's lights what's i hope you on? had a good stream playing apex legends over there oh that was kyle lady city lights what were you playing some forts i was about to say yeah, apex no way <laughs> Yo, Ing, thank you for the bits. We are talking about hype, tra <laughs> hype train. Thank you, guys. We are talking about crazy, crazy documentaries on Netflix and uh, how Don't Fuck With Cats shouldn't be allowed to be on Netflix. Two wins back to back. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> so, when I was growing up, the only time you saw crazy shit like that was when it was on HBO and there was no on demand. Right, like you had to catch it when it was on. Now was it's even what documentaries on. Back Hell then? yeah, bro! You want to know I one that I remember was... fucking vividly? It was called Doctor Death, right? And it was about this guy who who would create and maintain execution um machines essentially gas chambers uh, uh a gallo dr kevorkian, isn't it? Dr. kevorkian was assist that, assisted man? suicide that's different no, al pacino okay. played yeah, him nice. yo guys professor city lights with the bits thank you so fucking much that's who it was like that. yeah kevorkian and they they did a movie yeah. al pacino played him hbo original called you don't know jack I don't know Jack. You Called you don't know. Thanks. <laughs> Called you don't know Jack. That's about Kavorkian. But Nacho Mama, City Lights, Inked, Kazuto, Mr. Mills, Mom, who has spoken. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you all. But uh, yeah, we're talking. We're talking about wild documentaries. If if you have a wild documentary that you've seen that's on Netflix, drop it in chat. Let's talk about it quick. If maybe if you've seen it. But they do crazy ones like um, there's this there's the show on their dope um, where they talk about the different drug trades and they start where it's created and then they follow the drug all the way to the user, which is fucking nuts to me. It's interesting how how anyone allows that kind of uh, access to their criminal enterprise. <laughs> you know, though, like how, how would you allow how could you allow somebody to follow your entire operation with a camera you know i don't care how many waivers motherfucker 
will sign. <laughs> <laughs> It's got to be bad for business, unless like you know they really are dealing with the cartel. So they're probably just afraid they're gonna get killed if they said. That's anything. what I'm saying. I would say like, you why like as a drug dealer, like a high like a I don't know like it's it's like almost like a bragging for the drug dealers, but it's at the same time it's like those those high up drug dealers they ain't stupid enough to like be doing something like that. So that is pretty interesting. You gotta wonder, and then they, then they say in there, "I didn't want to do this. My boss is making me." <laughs> Crazy, yeah. bro. So, don't fuck with cats was one. All of the the serial killer interview, it's conversations with the killer. I fascinated by them. Fascinated. What's another one? There was the other one. I don't know if it was on Netflix, but it was called "Kidnapped in Plain Sight." Did you did you ever hear about that one? The kidnapped in plain sight where I feel like I've definitely heard about that. So they made a fucking they made movies on this one, shows on this one. This one is about a a family who had this really eccentric and and captivating next door neighbor, right? Like an older man, and he was totally in, attracted and in love with their young daughter, preteen daughter. Um, and he somehow manipulated them into being, like, able to, to, like, sleep in the same bed as his daughter. Like, even after he was arrested and convicted of, like, raping her, right? Like, crazy, wild shit. He ended up sleeping with both of the parents. Like, there's crazy, wild shit that happens in the world, and, and, and you wouldn't ever expect it to actually happen, but it does. It does. He kidnapped this girl, brought her to a, like, uh, a crazy fucking uh, desert in a in an RV and told her that she has to help populate the new world with this guy and that if she doesn't, aliens are going to wipe out her whole family. Like, he, she really had this... He had this young girl believing this stuff. Kidnapped in plain sight. Dude, That's insane. He, he, he... He made his her parents say that they were allowed to get married so that way he didn't go to jail. I mean, cr- kidnapped in plain sight. Give me another one. What's another documentary? Think, think about, well, not kidnapping, but uh, one I remember from a couple years ago, the Gabriel Fernandez child. Ooh. That oh, one. 600. I, I didn't even finish watching it, but that shit, that shit hurt, bro. Like, I, I didn't like that one. Those fucking parents are fucked up, you know? It, that, th- those are the ones where they starved their kid, basically, right? Like, starved them and beat them? Starved them, beat them. They had them in the, um, living, like, basically under a sink in, like, the, the, the cabinet, basically. That was basically his bed. They would lock him in there for, like, days and shit like that. And uh, I, 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 didn't, I didn't see the whole thing, but I just remember, like, even, like, like you know, cops were involved. And they saw all these things on them, and nobody did nothing about it. Basically, uh, I think it's to the point that where he died. Right, so they were sending him to school and everything, and nobody said shit. Nobody right. said shit, but then yeah, like the DPS got involved and everything like that, and <laughs> and even with them, nobody did anything. With from all the interviews they had, the um, parents were willing to take him in and not be with the daughter. The daughter just wanted him, and they had three other kids, and treated those other kids fine, but the the youngest was the worst treated out of all of them. But wanted them for like the welfare check and for the money because you know they get the money both from mom and dad for that shit. Yeah, that that one was. Casey Anthony is another crazy ass one. So they just did a fucking documentary with her on Hulu or some shit where like she a, like a new like documentary because she yeah. she changed her story again. Hey, who? Casey Anthony. Casey Anthony, the. I don't even remember the how does it go? She like reported her missing and then they found her in the pool. Right? Oh, so so Casey Anthony said that the babysitter took her. Said that the babysitter took the kid and yo, Jinx, first time chat, big C with a hundred bitties. Thank you guys. Thank you for the follow too, Jinx. Appreciate you. Um Yes, no, that one was she was saying that she had a job at at Universal. And that she was sit, dropping off her daughter Kaylee with the babysitter, and that the babysitter took the took her daughter, and she didn't report her missing for a month, but 
they saw, they smelled what they thought was a dead body in the trunk of the car. Exactly, Kyle. <clears throat> and they called the cops. The parents of Casey Anthony did, right? And then they finally got to her admit that the nanny wasn't real. She never worked at the place. And then very shortly after she had been in jail for a while, they found the body right down the road from her house in the in the woods. Once they got to the trial, they dropped the bomb that the kid drowned in the pool and that the father took the body and did whatever. But Casey did nothing. That was the story. They said that the father yeah, was raping Casey, all that shit, right? I think I remember this. This, this happened in 2008. This was, huge. this was huge when this happened. This was the first trial that I ever... I started Twitter for this. <laughs> for real. Because I wanted to, to see the updates on the trial during the... Because during the, it was the biggest fucking thing since OJ. It that was, was, it was huge. huge. Yo, she, she got she off got and off, I right? knew she was going to get off too. I called it when she was doing it. I was like, she's going to get off somehow. Don't ask me how, but she is. I think this I saw a, a white documentary on that actually. Now that I remember, yes, I remember. It was like a white girl, right? Yeah, fucking white girls. I remember that. Get away with everything. She did get away with it. She was crazy. She was I want to watch that. I remember again. it was three, three years after I graduated high school. Yeah, she was young. See, we're the same age pretty much as her. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, she was. <laughs> she so was like 23, older, right? 22, 23. I think she's 37 yeah. now or something. Yeah, so she's a couple years older. You said she made a new story? What's the new story again? It was just an update on what she's been doing for the last 15 years or whatever, however mm -hmm. long it's been. Ah, okay. And apparently she's just been working for her lawyer, like one of her lawyers, not Jose Baez, but somebody else, one of the other lawyers that worked on her case. She did it. I followed the whole story. Facts. I believe it. Did you see the new, the uh, new, yeah. the new thing? Um, the new doc that she did, where she still is somehow claiming weird shit. I don't know, man. I don't know how you can believe someone like that. I think it was called a DCS or DSC uh, documentary on YouTube. And they show like the interrogations for like all these like serial killers or whatnot, and how the cops have sicker ways of like motives or like how they know they're lying, how their normal people react and shit like that. I think that's why I remember seeing Casey Anthony. But that interrogation was pretty crazy too. I don't remember seeing her interrogation so much. I remember seeing her. She she yo she that the reason why she got out is because she stuck to her her guns. If I didn't do it, I don't know. And I mean, I think that proves a lot about the legal system in the sense of like, if you keep your mouth shut and you don't go in there and start telling on yourself, like you can get away with a lot. Especially if you're the only one that knows the truth. Nobody knows nothing yeah, unless you like, say it. Because they, they actually need like, right. legitimate proof to, to lock you up. Oh yeah. So it's like if they don't have it and you just don't say some shit, you know, you don't get caught up, like, you know, stick to the... Well, in this case, you don't even have to stick to the same story, but... As long as it's just, not incriminating, you say whatever the fuck you gotta say, right? But yeah. So, here's the story. Although, Since, like, that's, like, a big thing. I was like, if she did lie, it's like, how do you... Like, okay, well, you lied about that, so what else are you lying about? Well, <laughs> well so that's what Alex Murdaugh did, right? Alex Murdaugh fucked himself, which doesn't make any sense, because he's a lawyer. Why would you go on the stand? Why would you go up there and try and explain anything? But he did. He went out there and testified on his own defense. And he literally says, yep, I was a drug addict. I, that's the defense that he used. I was a drug addict and I was lying and I just kept on lying because I was a drug addict. That's the excuse. But like fucking five people are dead. So people didn't really want to hear that shit. You know, <laughs> like I, I'm a drug addict. I'm fuck. But. So, for instance, right, when it comes down to, like, I definitely want to talk about how my whole criminal life started and ended in a very fast and abrupt fashion. Like, I probably held on for a little bit longer than most people, but 
I once got arrested for a burglary that I was I was genuinely committing the burglary, right? Like I was I was doing it. <clears throat> it was an abandoned house, um, so we weren't you know robbing TVs and shit. We were yanking wire out of the walls and uh, and copper pipe. So we walk into this house. When we walk in, we have our backpacks. We grab a couple things, whatever. As we come out, the cops are there. Get out of the fucking, get down, right? And they had the whole house surrounded. I was like, fuck. So I'm already in trouble. I'm on paper, right, which is, uh, you know, probation. Which means if I get in trouble and I get arrested, I don't get any bail. I go to jail and I got to sit. <laughs> so I get arrested and I'm on probation already for the same thing. A burglary. Because I am a, I'm a junkie. I'm a heroin addict. And I did not get any help. I got arrested, and I just kept on doing drugs. I never went and got sober. So I'm at the bottom of the barrel right now. I'm on probation. I'm, I'm getting high. Everything's all fucked up. And now I'm arrested again. I get arrested with this guy that I was, you know, running the streets with. <clears throat> so obviously we're not going to say that we were in there robbing the house. We're going to say we were squatting. It was, uh, it was a fucking abandoned house. That makes sense, you know. We were just sleeping here. Doesn't look like that because we had book bags and fucking wire cutters and shit, right? It didn't look that way, so we got arrested. But we stuck to that story. No, it wasn't us. That wasn't our stuff. You didn't find that on us. That was in the house already. That wasn't ours. And we stuck to that story. And it took us like seven months sitting in jail fighting it, but we beat it. Nothing happened to us. We got charged with a felony that carried up to three years in prison, and they dropped it, right? Right? Now, because I was already in trouble, they violated me for police contact. That's what saved my life. Because if they would have let me out at that moment, I would have went right back to drugs, and I would have ended up fucking dead. On the, who knows what? I definitely wouldn't be where I am right now, having a baby, super fucking pumped, you know? Like, I wouldn't be here, that's for sure. So, so them not letting me out saves my life because I would have been fucked up if I did. But they let Joe out. They let my buddy out because he wasn't on probation. Right? <laughs> yeah, they let Joe out. <laughs> when um they let him out and he was fucked. He's fucked up forever. He's been he's been fucked up ever since. He's never gotten right. But I went away and I was gone for almost two years total. So I had a lot of time away from all the shit. A lot of a few people close to me passed away. Um and it was easy for me to try kind of get sober at that time, you know, but you, you you can get away with quite a bit if you if you are uh, legally if you don't stick t- like to stick to your story, man. In DWIs too, people blow into those fucking things when they get pulled over and they've been drinking. They just tell on themselves when they do that. Don't blow. You're going to jail, but like don't blow. You know what I mean? They let you out. They let you go home when you blow in those things. That's how they. That's the trade off, right? Hey man, just blowing this make my job easy. We'll get you out of here. You know, we'll ROR you. Whatever. They're going to do that anyway. Just don't make it easy for them. That's my legal advice today. That is legal advice. <laughs> That's great. I'm not an attorney, but I do have experience. <laughs> Spent many hours in the law library, bro. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm very safe to state. I know here, if you don't, if you don't blow, like, they'll, they'll, uh, Bring you to fucking. They'll call the ambulance. They'll bring you in. They'll eventually get like the warrant to extract blood. Yeah, but well, that is a totally. In all due different... time. In all due time, you'll probably be sober by the, you know, unless you're fucking piss ass drunk. Yeah, you always wait. By the time all that happens, you'll be. You'll probably. Oh, no. And if you're not, if you're not sober, you'll at least blow less than you would have two hours ago. So you don't have to blow if they tell you to. Hell, fucking no, you don't. No, yeah, you don't have to. It depends on, I guess it depends on what state you're in. Let me not say that. Because there, I don't there, think you there, have to. Well, hold on a second. Because there are certain states where you have, it is a law where you have to give your, your blood. Like, they will, they well, have so, to. You know, so that's Jersey, but it's going to take, so, like, they're not going to, the, the cops not going to, like, whip out a needle on the side of the. No, the they, you got to get arrested. Yeah. Then they got to take you to the fucking uh, emergency they room. Process, yeah. Right? It's a process. And. What you have to do is, in that process, you have to uh, you have to to make the process as difficult for them as possible. So you drag the process along, 
right? Like, don't cooperate. Make it difficult for them. The longer you wait, the longer you wait. So, and then this is only if you're in a state where they're taking your blood by force, right? Because I live in New York. I and, and, and I hate to talk about it like this, but I'm going to do it because I've got great stories. I really do. I've got great stories. I spent years in and out of jail. Years, 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 years. Too long. Wasted my wasted time, man. Wasted time. <laughs> but like I said, if I didn't make the decisions I made, I wouldn't have made it to where I am here right now. And I'm really happy with where I'm at most days. Um, so, yeah. So... I got arrested for a DWI once, and my car was smashed up against a telephone pole. I mean, they literally had me dead to rights. They pulled me out of the car, cops knocking on the window, get out, t- tires uh, off the fucking car, literally tires off the car, uh, blow in this, do this, nope, not doing it, right? Okay, well, you're going to jail. All right, let's go to jail. Right? If you don't go, if you, okay, you're going to go to jail. All right, tough guy. Well, we're taking your license for a year, too. Take my license. Anything they say to you, just fucking do this. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Anything they say, just yeah. keep your mouth shut. Don't listen. Don't listen. <laughs> so, all of that stuff that they say to you, once you actually get to the uh, to the police station, they're gonna have to set bail. They're gonna have to ROR. And now with the with the with the the laws in New York, you don't go to jail for nothing. They let you go every fucking for everything. You can be a repeat offender. I mean, they literally don't want to put people in jail in New York anymore. So yes, you're gonna lose your license right away. Yes, you're gonna have to go get processed and all that shit. But what happens is they set a, a DWI. DMV court hearing where you go to DMV court and they judge based on your court whether or not you're guilty of the DWI and you should lose your license or not because you're not supposed to be held accountable for you're not supposed to be held accountable for protecting your rights and you don't have to do the things that they're saying to you and you don't get held accountable for those things so so if you tell them no, you're not supposed to be held accountable for it. So what happens is I went, I went to the jail. I, they put up a $500 bail. I didn't take any of the tests, right? I immediately got my license suspended, but you go and get a conditional in your first court date, just like you would any other time, right? Because you're losing your license anyway. They just say that you're losing it automatically for a year. <clears throat> brother is really bad off drugs and alcohol. He's been like that since he was a teen. Yeah, I was for years. I've heard about Portland, Oregon stores like Walmart are closing because they're losing money from all the stealing. It's bad. Dude, it's terrible everywhere like that, especially cities like that, especially liberated cities like that, Portland, mm-hmm. where they literally let them line up on the streets. and you li- <laughs> as, as a junkie, as a as a junkie, as somebody who has done hardcore drugs for years and has been sober for years now off of the hardcore shit, you don't help somebody by providing clean needles. You don't help somebody by letting them sleep on the street and encouraging their, their drug use. If you're giving them drugs, because I've heard that there's places that are actually giving drugs now, like fixes a couple times a, um, a day. If you're going to a place that's offering that stuff, you give nobody any reason to get better, right? You're just making it more accessible, making it easier. You have to take away the drugs and make them fucking squirm before they can even think right. You're just aiding and abetting that, the, 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 the cycle. My, my uh, brother was pretty bad for, for years, and uh, it, was always, it, it was always somebody enabling him. And a lot of the times it was me. This is my brother, and I didn't want to see him hurt. And then um, at one point, I was just, you know, he called me. He got arrested again. He needed to bail me out. The good thing about my brother is, like, he never robbed, like, he never robbed me 
for too much, right? He, like he would go in my wallet, maybe take twenty out of forty, right? <laughs> Leave me twenty bucks. But just get enough that he had to, you know, get his fix. Uh, but like, like if um, like if we ever got in trouble together because of him, because I have gotten arrested because of him, he's taking the blame for it, right? Like he wouldn't fuck up my whole life for something he did. But what a guy! What a guy, right? But then, um, like at one point, dude, I like he called me from jail, and I just had to tell him, like, yo, it, it, you're gonna have to stay for a little while. Yeah. Like I can't. Like I like, bro. It was hard. It was that was one of the hardest things I've ever like. One of the hardest decisions I've had to make is like, it's my little brother. It's like it's like my big brother where it's like, bro, you should be teaching me what to do. It's like my little brother and like I have to teach you this lesson that I don't really want to, but like I don't know what else to do anymore. Listen, man. The we will as addicts, you take and take and take and take and take until you can't take anymore, and then and then it's a wrap. Like it's a wrap eventually so so when you start taking half the money from your family right it's like you still have a little bit of your soul left right there's still just a little bit there like you don't want to fucking you don't want to do it that bad but you know you you know they're gonna notice so you might as well take yeah. it all right like that's that's the train of thought of, a, of an addict right if you're gonna reach into somebody's personal space because now bro as somebody who used to do grimy shit like that i have no tolerance for it i mean fucking zero i know that feeling crazy all too well now that feeling of vi of, of your space being violated something that you take care of something that you that you love and appreciate something that you care for and somebody violates it in some way Right by taking something or doing something they shouldn't do on and putting it at risk, whatever, right? Somebody violates that and gives you that feeling. That doesn't just go away, right? You break into somebody's home. They come home. They see that shit's been disturbed and they're like scared. Was somebody here? Like that feeling is uneasy and it's in the back of your fucking head forever. It never goes away. You put that onto somebody, right? You put that onto someone, and that shit is no fucking joke, bro. It's no joke that that's a rough feeling, right? Like, so, it's like you have it's like, yep. You don't even feel safe when you're on that. Like when you're on the other side of that, it's like I don't like this is my safe place, right? Like my house, my room, my whatever, right? Like because at the time I lived with my brother, like, with my parents, and it was like this is my room. You have your room. Like this is like my space, <laughs> like my personal like safe place to be. And like now I can't even go in there and feel like my shit is safe bro facts i mean my sisters used to have to lock their rooms and then they would like booby trap shit to see if i was like rummaging through their stuff yeah it would, like set shit a certain way so it's like it would fall over kind of shit so yeah. it's like, all right i know he's been in here but to think that i we don't know that you know how many times we've seen your little traps like that and we just <laughs> fix it and you don't realize that we were there right like no, that's, that's how problem. that's like, how no, like, cunning the, the addiction no, is. I, bro, I, I know, I know. Like I said, I've, my brother, man, I've dealt with it. Like, this motherfucker... And that's why I was like, I had to make that decision of like, no, like, you, you're going to have to stay in jail for a little while. Like, you're going to have to fucking go through a withdrawal by yourself fucking on a hard-ass bed. And, like, you're going to have to deal with it. A uh, withdrawal in jail like, is with, easy. Yeah, I don't know. It is, hard. actually. You want to know something? It's It's a bizarre thing that happens. When you're at home trying to kick dope you are the biggest bitch on planet earth right everything oh, is the you... end of the fucking world you can't fucking help it oh my god this that and the other gotta get new more drugs right just can't fucking live oh i'm gonna die but when you're in jail bro it's like a fucking mosquito bite yeah, like, it really is makes sense too. it's really like you got all these people looking at you like i'm not doing that <laughs> yeah, I know. You can't be weak and try and fucking manipulate <laughs> the people around you with crying and saying that yeah, you're sorry yeah, and I and need no it. No, and and then yeah. on top of it, not only you're not are you gonna look weak, but you got no control. You ain't nobody in there gonna help you. You got no drugs. You got nothing. Especially in in the first seven days of your of your jail, right? Because that's the thing that people forget. You don't just go to prison and all of a sudden you got access to drugs and shit like that. You got to go through through processing. And that processing experience is the worst. Honest open prick. Shout out to Arthur. Happy birthday, Arthur. Arthur's one year. Happy, birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Arthur. Yeah, you got to go through intake. And intake is a fucking process. That shit takes all day. 
If you get arrested at fucking 9 a.m., you're not hitting a cell until 9 p.m., right? And then once you get to that cell, you got to do your TB test, right? So that's a seven-day thing where they poke you in the arm and they wait and see if you got tuberculosis, right? And you got to, they, they wait. And if you, especially if you're on drugs and you tell them you're on drugs, they put you in the med unit and they wait until it's all out of your system. Ain't nobody giving you nothing during that period. You have no contact. It's it's 20, uh, 23 and one, lockdown twenty three wow. and one, for um, for your intake process. <laughs> That's insane. I didn't know that. Especially if you're on. If I remember, if I remember correctly, the like the county jail over here is twenty three and one all all day. Every Yo, day. the county Not jail is intake, the, like is everything. the worst. It's the worst. Yeah, yeah, the county one. County jail is is the hardest time that you can do. I'm not even kidding. The the county where I've done time the most of my time, it's it's 23 and one when you're when you're in your intake, and then once you get into your pod, you're locked down, right? So you're outside, you're eating, you're showering, you're going to the nurse, you're getting your fucking haircut. All of it is in this 150 through three person pod. It all happens there. Outside is just a door that is basically a concrete closet with no ceiling, right? Like a, with a fucking fence ceiling. It's all right there. So then once you go in, you're locked in from, from, uh, you're out of your cell from, from uh, 7 a.m. to 11, right? Then you're locked in from 12 to 2. Then you're out from uh, 2 to 5. Then you're in from five to seven. Then you're out from seven to ten, and then you do it all over again. It's lock in, lock out, lock in, lock out, lock in, lock out. You eat alone. You shower alone. Everything's alone. You live alone. There's good and bad to it. There's good and bad to it. But there's 53 people on a pod, and that's where you're at, and and that's it. It's a crazy one. That's it. I can happily say that I have not enjoyed the fine experience of being in jail. None of it's fun, I, that's for sure. <laughs> Definitely not. Don't look like it. So happy birthday to Arthur, honest open prick. Darth Wacko, what's up, man? Good to see you. Cobra, good to see you too. Just do it. Guys, good to see you all. We're going to be heading out of here. We talked about documentaries and fucking wild crazy shit that they put on you uh on netflix and hulu and shit now dragorian hello netflix got that money <laughs> no facts netflix does have that money poor old blockbuster what that was your last bid do it 178 i forget i forget how many days mine was the last bid i did was 14 months Jeez. 14 months yeah. Hey, yo, hey, you came a long way, though, bro. So, shout out to you, man. Proud to. I appreciate um, it. I feel like everything happens for a reason. That's why I feel like if you go through the bad stuff or the good stuff, everything happens for a reason. And, yeah, I'm proud of how the person you became today. I appreciate it. I do. Four and a half years clean and sober. Let's go. That's fire. Yo, we're raiding over to Sarge Purple with 101 people. I had a blast tonight. Thank you all. We'll catch you on the next one. Have a good one, peeps. We will uh, we'll see you later. Peace out. Peace Have out. a good one.